so last time we left off, and I just talked about clustering. I mentioned the fact that clustering, as with some of the other ones, don't work for everything. But when it works, it's really nice. It just means all the numbers are sort of grouped around very close to the same number. Then we use sort of a repeated addition idea, which is multiplication, and you can multiply the number of numbers, which is five here, by the value that they're all really close to. All right, so the next one we're going to look at is rounding. And rounding um, here, we're going to do it two different ways simply because it doesn't give us a lot of information. Typically speaking, in order to work with rounding, somebody needs to tell you what place you're rounding to, don't they? And so if they don't tell you what place they're rounding to, you get to pick, I mean, because they didn't tell you. So if you were picking because you had no other information told you, what's the nicest place to round to on this problem? The thousands. The thousands, right? Because that would mean that I get the most zeros. And the more zeros I have, the easier it is to add. So if I have um, rounding, remember for rounding, if you have zero through four, you round down, which means if this number, the second number is like that, right? Because I have a one right here. So rounding down doesn't mean that the three in the front changes. It means that everything else rounds down to zero. So the number 3,100 and whatever rounds down to 3,000, correct? Okay, so the three in the front doesn't actually end up changing. And then if you have five through nine, then you round up. So rounding up actually does change the number in front. And so that's what's going on in the first one, right? Here's a seven. And so the seven rounds the four up to a five. So if you had 4,000, I'm sorry, 5,000 plus 3,000, you get 8,000. Okay. Um, now this is the, the thousands place. And then we also, we'll just do just for um, the sake of having done so, let's do the hundreds place. And let me erase these. So if I'm gonna do the hundreds place, it means I look one to the right of the hundreds place to decide how I'm going to round. So 4789, will it round up or down? Up to what? I mean 800. So, okay, so 4800, <laughs> right? Okay. So the four stays the same because I'm affecting only the hundreds place now, and the seven goes up to an eight. How about 3148? 3100. All right, so that one rounds down, right? Which means the first two numbers actually stay the same. They don't change. And if you were to add up 43, I'm sorry, 4800 plus 3100, what do you get? And those two actually happen to be very close together. But that doesn't always happen when you do rounding in different place values. You could get numbers that are quite drastically different. Uh, but this one actually gives you values that are much, very, very similar. All right, so I have, I think I have one more for addition. Using the range, okay? All right, so using the range uh, is an idea of using front-end estimation and using rounding to create sort of a range in which the numbers added together would actually be in, okay? So the way it's gonna look is actually that's the components of both of those values, the front end estimation and rounding. Do you remember what front end estimation was last time? Where you first number add Yes, you use the first number only and then what happens to everything else? Yeah. You like try to We did that, that was the with adjustment yeah. part. So the adjustment part's where we're trying to pair things up. But the front end part was simply making the first two numbers stay the same, and everything else turned into zeros, okay? And I say first two numbers because I'm talking about the three and the six here, those okay. first two numbers, yeah. Sorry, I probably shouldn't have said it quite like that. But the first number stays the same, and everything else turns into zeros. That's front end estimation. And then we did this other thing called with adjustments, where we dealt with the adjustments of the other digits later um, in that particular problem. But the front end part was simply the first number, okay? So if the first number stays the same, that means I have 300, right? First number stays the same, everything else is the zeros. And then 647 would be 600. Now this is the low end, right? Because what we really did is we rounded everything down. Did we? We did, we rounded everything down. Okay, we turned it to the smallest hundred value nearest to 370, nearest to 647. And when I add these together, I get 900. So this is sort of, this is what we call, this actually has a name, it is called rounding down. And it, it is the same thing as front-end estimation. Not the decimal part, but front-end estimation. 
uh, the other end of this range is going to be rounding up. So instead of taking 370 down to 300, what do you think we're going to do? We're going to take it up to 400, the nearest 100 up from where it is. And we do the same thing with the second digit. Instead of going down to 600, we're going to go up to 700. And if I add 400 and 700 together, I get 1100. So my range is 900 to 1100. Okay, so this kind of would be the idea, right, that um, you have some money in your pocket. So we're going to imagine we've got lots of money in our pocket. Okay, so I have 370 in my pocket. It's good, right? But Megan, she's got more, she's got 347 in her pocket. Okay? So it's the idea that if we combine these two values together, in what kind of what ballpark would our money end up? Well, it'd be somewhere between $900 and $1,100. Okay? It's just giving you a ballpark figure. Okay? And the interesting thing here is that the range is always going to be 200 apart, isn't it? Because in one case, you round it down to the nearest 100, and in the other case, you round it up to the nearest 100, and you're adding two numbers together. Right? So they're always going to be 200 apart more than the range. So range does not give you one value. It gives you a range of values. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Multiplication doesn't have this property. Yeah. Or what does it ask for? Let's take a look at it later. Maybe I can just remember what they're talking about. Okay. Um, we do have... I do have um, a couple of methods to take a look at with estimation and multiplication and division, but I'm not sure what you're seeing, but we'll check it. Okay. Um, so we're going to do a front end estimation with multiplication, and then we're going to do compatible numbers with division. All right. So first of all, the front end estimation with multiplication, and it's going to have the adjustment. Okay. So that probably should have said front end with adjustment. The adjustment is done a little bit differently, but. Um, all right, so front-end estimation takes the first number and makes everything else zeros, right? Yes? Okay. So this 386 becomes 300, and we multiply then 300 times 4, and we get 1,200. So the adjustment component of this basically ignores the 3, okay? So we've done, we've dealt with the 3 already. And we're going to consider the 86 that I haven't dealt with. And I take 86 and I do front end estimation with 86. So what would front end estimation with 86 be? 80. So then I take my 80 and multiply it by 4 to get 320. And then what do you think I'm going to do? We're going to add those together. So we only do it two digits deep. We don't keep going because we did it one more time and we actually have the exact value. Um, but we go with these two, and what do we end up with total for? 1,520. Yes. Yes. So, no, 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 still the two times in. You just do the first two, two. The first two, you get 1,000 twice and 100. Is it ever here Anna's question? Anna wanted to know if you actually had a number that was like four digits wide, about in the thousands times three or something like that, whatever it's times. Would you go three digits in? Like, would I go all the way into the tens like Right? The answer is no. You just do it to me. Okay, so if we had a number in the millions, okay, we use the millions digit and then we do just hundred thousand digit times whatever we're multiplying. What's that? Yes. Yes. So for example, if you had a number like this, we're still only gonna have two additions. We're just going to do it with the first two numbers. So we're going to have 40,000 times 6, find that value, and we're going to do 3,000 times 6, and find that value, and then we would add them. Same process, it's just you use whatever the first two numbers are. That makes it like you have to do it even like the last three. No, because it's an estimation. Um, yeah, if we were finding the exact values, we would do the next what if there's ever like multiple like two digit number at the spot? Yeah. Like if it's like forty that forty three thousand nine hundred and twenty one times fifty six. Like there's two 
Is it one of the book? Yeah. I, I don't remember seeing one like that. Um, so let's encounter it when we get to it. Um, I, only saw, I only saw this description when we had a one digit number. This, this method when there was a one digit number. It's not a bad question because I wondered as well, but I didn't see anything where they had one like that. Yeah. All right, compatible numbers. Do you guys remember doing compatible numbers a little bit ago? Yeah. Last time, yeah. Um, like last Friday, yeah, or Monday. All right, so compatible numbers is the idea that we want to be able to choose a value that works nicely. Okay. So 4132 doesn't work so nicely to divide by 4. But what's a really close nearby value of 4132 that really nicely easily divides by 4? 4,000. So we're doing some sort of a rounding here, and there's not necessarily one right answer, okay? So, oops, and I even wrote the wrong thing. Let's try it again. 4,000. So we're choosing a nearby value that divides by our value well. If it's out of the number 4,000, there's 4. That is 4,000 is. And if we divide this, we get 1,000. So our answer is 1,000. 